Hello and welcome to another night of fantasy art painting. I've been away for a little while, but I am back at it with a painting that I promised a long time ago, but it actually took me a while to come up with a composition that I like and get some reference and, uh, you know, come up with something that I really like and enjoy and I'm looking forward to paint. So this is going to be a painting of Merlin the Magician from the time of King Arthur. And uh, I have it sketched out and I'm finally ready to begin on it. What's up, Hail Candy Ray? What's happening? Long time no see. I've been MIA, but I'm back. How have you been? Go kick butt on the raid train. I'm going to be here for at least an hour or two. Thank you for stopping by to say hi. Miss talking to you. The colors I'm going to use tonight, I'm going to do a limited palette. I'm going to, of course, have my black and white, and I'm using ivory black and titanium white tonight. And then for the background, I'm going to be using pale green. And for the main palette of Merlin, I'm going to use, uh, let's see, violet as one of the main colors, rose, and crimson red. And then I have a little white rose that I'm going to use for some accent and lighting. But these are the colors of the main palette of the, excuse me, of the main character. So looking forward to that. Bucky 501, thanks for stopping by. And then I'm using my typical butcher palette. Got my wet pad laid out, ready to get started. First thing I'm going to do is knock out this background. And I'm definitely looking forward to this. I might have to do a little bit of, that's a pretty dark palette, so we'll see how this comes out. Hope everybody's doing good tonight, and I have to get my thing set up here. All right, I think I'm good to go. I got my drink, got my pair of brushes. Oh. So this is something that I said I was going to do a while back. I just never did it. Um, it took me a while to come up with something that I was actually really excited about. And then finally, um, I don't know, finally something inspirational hit me, which normally I don't have a problem with. But because Merlin is such a a nondescript character, you know, he's, he's a wizard. Any wizard can be Merlin. I mean, if we're being honest, right? What makes Merlin special? I don't know. Um, so I was trying to think of ways, how can I do Merlin? And you kind of know it's Merlin. And I don't know if I, I've solved that problem. I probably should have scuffed up this, uh, board a little more before I started painting. But this is why I like putting down a wash on top of the uh, canvas to start with, because as you can see, it kind of beads up in places. And that I don't want my main la paint layer to be beaded up. But if I do this first, then everything else will start you know, it'll, it'll have something to stick to as opposed to beating up, but I'm going to do a little technique. Um, that I saw from one of the instructors at the Watts Atelier and I'm going to see how it goes. I don't want to repaint the background 
so I'm trying to get this on. It's a wash, but I want to get it on as I want it to be somewhat opaque, have a little thickness to it. And the reason why you'll see here in a second. So now that I've, I've got good coverage and it's no longer beating up on me, I've got something to work off of. I may wind up doing a little something in the background, but for the most part, I don't plan on it. Um, but I, I may put in I may put in a little bit thicker background, just depends on how the main character comes out. But what I want to do is I want to take and this is something I've never tried before, but I think it's going to have pretty decent results. While this is wet, I'm going to come through and I'm going to have like the magic up in here, the magic from his staff. And I want two beams of light coming down like that. So I'm going to lift up some of that color while it's still wet. And then I'm going to come back. with another wash in a different color and fill that in. And hopefully that gives me what I'm looking for. Like that. Ooh, that's too much, too much. That's what I'm looking for. And hopefully that dries with a nice blend. And if it does, I will be so happy. I'll be super happy. This is the first time I've ever tried something like this. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm a little heavy on the wash inside the main character. So I'm going to have to let this sit for a second to let it dry. And I've got a hair. Doggone it. I got a loose brush hair and I don't think I'll be able to get it without messing up the wash. So I'm just going to let it dry. Luckily, the wash is pretty thin. So even after it dries, I'll be able to get that hair up without um, messing it up. If I had a toothpick, I would go ahead and pick it up right now, but I don't have a toothpick. Shame on me. Shame on me for not checking to make sure there's no loose brush hairs on my brush as well. And I can see where it's already starting to bleed between the blue and the green, which is exactly what I want. And I'm looking forward to how it turns out. I don't know. But so far, I'm not mad at it. I hope everybody's doing good tonight. Um, I hope everybody is enjoying themselves as we settle in for a night of painting. Um, I don't know. I'll put in maybe an hour or two, see how it goes from there. I'm going to get rid of this brush. Give me just a moment. I love my mop brush, but it is kind of hard to deal with sometimes. Um, man, if I had a, 
Do I have a toothpick or something that I can pick this hair up with? There we go. All right, because that would have been bugging me. So now this is, oh, I didn't pull out a skin tone, but I'm not going to be doing the skin tone right away anyway. I'm going to be focused on, although I could probably, can I use this? No, I can't use that. Um, I'm not going to focus on the skin tone right away anyway. I'm going to be focused on the robe. And I really tried to put in some nice uh, creases and crevices into it, some deep, uh, dark areas to, to kind of make it really pop. And I'm going to start off with the violet with a little bit of black. Uh, and um, actually, I don't know. Do I want to do that? because I don't want to do that yet. I do not want to do that yet. One of the things I also wanted to do, if I can find the right brush, is take some of that blue and put it in the areas that are going to be highlighted from the magic. So I want to do that real quick while I have the blue out. And that blue will be part of the underpainting in some of those areas. That's my favorite brush right there. Let me put that to the side. And find another one to do this. I'm always late on pulling the brushes together that I want to use. Always late. And then they're not always shaped and ready for use once I do pull them. The good thing about using gouache and watercolor and watercolor brushes, put a little water and I get my point right back on the brush. Just a little bit of water, brings the bristles together and I'm good to go. And what I want to do is take some of this blue and put it in some areas that are going to be highlighted. Again, his staff is going to have a blue magic orb about it. It'll be off screen, so to speak. But I want to give that image that it's flowing down over him. And that's what I'm going to be using for my magic effect is the blue. So if I say blue hits here, It'll hit along the arm, and as the rays come down, it'll come down the back a little bit. So there's just a few areas I want to come in and put a little bit of the blue wash in there. And I'm going to cover it up, but it'll be part of the underpainting. And this is a pearl blue, so it's going to give me um, something really nice to work with. It's going to be something really nice to work with here. As long as I don't go and mess it up, it should be nice. Um, I've already lost my place. <laughs> I've already lost my place. There we go. And I'm just going to pick out some areas here to put this underpainting piece in there. And the cool thing about putting this as part of the underpainting is since I'm using gouache and it's, it's water-based, I can control the opacity and area, areas where this kind of shines through are going to look very, very cool. And this whole side right here, I'm going to drape 
with this blue as an underpainting. This part of the robe hangs down. And so I'm going to go ahead and just highlight that whole part as an accent. And then when I cover it up, parts that shine through are going to just, that pearl is going to come through. And it's going to be beautiful. I know it's going to be beautiful. I do need to dry up some of this water, though. Oh, that's on my board, not on the painting. Plus, this is going to give it a little bit of the, the regal look. I mean, he's part of King Arthur's court. So let me dry up some of this water real quick. So I want to give him a little bit of that regalness about him. I just want to make sure my hand doesn't sit in the water and then touch the painting. Because I do rest my hand on the painting while I paint. And since it's gouache, it dries relatively quickly. So it doesn't doesn't bother the painting too much as long as my hand's not wet. And I use this little blue stick, little blue sticker here, little blue piece of tape to remind me of the direction of the lighting. So that if I ever lose my place while I'm painting, I can always remember, oh yeah, lighting's coming from this direction. And it's actually coming from up in this direction here to be to be accurate. And I'll even put some of this in the shadows. This is going to be a shadow piece here. But it's going to catch a little magic. And then around the head, I'm going to go ahead and frame that with some magic. I'm just going to call my blue the magic. I'm framing it with the magic. One of the cool things about fantasy painting is you can do what you need to do to make it look cool. That's the cool about making it cool. If you want it to look cool, make it look cool. I want to remember not to make it too opaque because I do want it to sit as an underpainting as it dries into that green. I think I'm gonna get some really nice color variations. And uh, it's really gonna to add to the art. To come up with this pose, I used myself as a model. And I had my wife take some pictures of me, which was, <laughs> She's like, what the heck are you doing? Because these pictures are actually the reference pictures. I'm actually in my bathrobe. And then I have a, a scarf over my, like a winter scarf over my head. I've got one of my art books open up. And then I grabbed a, a roll of wrapping paper as the, as the staff. So it's kind of funny. I think I actually have the picture posted on my Instagram. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but I think. But it's a little it's a little hilarious. But really what I wanted it for was I couldn't come up with all of these folds and creases without it, you know, it would have been, it would have been all right. It may have even been realistic, 
but it would not have been cool. And we just talked about you got to make it cool. So I'm really digging that already. The green, the blues, the magic on his robe. I am actually really digging it already. Angel Cake, hello, how are you doing? Thanks for stopping by. We are doing uh, some fantasy art painting tonight. And we are doing Merlin the Magician. I think this is really starting to, I love this, the way it's actually starting to frame already. My focal point is going to be his face because whenever there's a character, people are always going to focus on the face. But I want to also make sure that his staff and his spell book are emphasized. So I've got to make sure I find a way that after people look at the face, draw their attention to the spell book and the staff. And so I'm probably going to use the blue magic along the staff and in the spell book to kind of tie everything together. I think that's the best use of it. Um, the cool thing about paint is if it turns out you don't like it, you can paint it over. But I think so far I'm going to be happy with it. So where is everybody from? Um, I'm on Florida on the East Coast, but I do these shows later because I know a lot of people in different time zones like to stop by. And so I like to try to accommodate where possible. Not to mention the fact that I miss living in Arizona. The other day I was actually thinking about when I used to live in New Mexico. It's uh, at the time. It, it's beautiful. New Mexico is always beautiful. But at the time. Uh, we had kids who were little and the schools weren't uh, super great in Albuquerque. They were OK, but they weren't super great. And then the. um There wasn't a lot to do in Albuquerque. Uh, if you really wanted to do something, you had to get on a plane and go to Phoenix, which was only a 45 minute flight. And they're very cheap uh, or inexpensive, I should say. But if you were just looking for something to do in Albuquerque, it, it wasn't a whole lot to do. But as I got older or as I get older, not as I got older, as I get older, and the kids are grown, um, so they're out of school. And I'm like, hmm, would it be a better place to to actually live now? I love Santa Fe. They have a very nice art scene. So on this part here, I'm going to try to keep it rough because it's a wooden staff. And I don't want to... Uh, I don't need the lines to be so um, so rigid. And I can go a little bit, bit more opaque um, in this area here. Although, I'm, again, I'm going to go over this with a different color. But the areas where it shows through, it's going to make it look really cool. And how are we doing on time so far? We've been at it for less than 30 minutes. We've got the uh,
the wash down. It's starting to dry. I went a little bit too heavy in there. It may turn out to be a good thing or a bad thing. It's just taking longer to dry. I'm digging that so far. And then the last part is I want to make sure I put some magic on the spell book. Like I said, I'm calling this blue, which is a pearl blue. It's a cerulean, I think. Is it? Yeah, pearl cerulean blue. Um, I'm calling this my magic because that's what I'm going to use to emphasize magic in this painting is this pearl cerulean blue and that that pearl is really good is what's going to make things pop because it's going to shine through in certain areas and just it's going to look really cool i know this So I've got the magic frame in his face. I've got the magic rays coming down from the staff off stage. And then I've got the magic glow hitting certain areas to kind of frame things up. So I, I kind of dig it. It's not too much. It's not overkill. And um, And I can always go in later and put in more magic but i think right now that's good enough i'm also probably going to do something with his eyes let's put a little magic in his eyes just a little bit because the face will be a focal point might as well tie it all together I can dig it. I can dig it. I hope you can dig it too. Shout out. Let me know what you think. Am I off base? Is it okay? Am I smoking that stuff again? I don't smoke. But I do drink. <laughs> All right. I like it. I like it. So now I'm going to start hitting some of the really dark colors. Let's just say dark shadows. I'm going to start hitting some of the really dark shadows. And I'm going to go with violet with a little touch of black. Um, the violet's already pretty dark. But I want to make it even darker because I'm going to go into those deep, dark shadow areas. And I don't want to go straight black just yet. Because if I go straight black, then I don't, I can't go any darker. So I'm, I'm always trying to be careful about going to straight black or straight white too fast. Because once you do that, there's nowhere else to go. You can't go lighter. You can't go darker because you've already used it. And then sometimes when you get toward the end of a painting, you really want that. You, you'll see an area that you go, oh, if I could just go a little bit darker right there. But then you realize you already run as dark as you could with, with the black. So you, you kind of hamstringing yourself. And this looks, it looks black, but it's not. It's, it's violet with black. And, uh, I'll still have room to go, to go darker if I need to. I'm trying to be conscious of my brushes tonight. 
because once I get into a groove, I'll start using my paint brushes for mixing and I try to keep my mixing brushes a little bit separated just because I don't want to tear them apart. Uh, but oh yeah, I like that. That's a nice deep purple, deep violet. Um, but it's not black. And it should dry just a little bit lighter because it's gouache. And gouache dries just a little bit lighter than what you start off with. And I'm still going to have the black that I can use to maybe definitely highlight some areas or show where some creases are. Like this, this uh, if I'm doing this here, this little bit right here, if I wanted to go deep black, it would stand out. I'm actually probably going to go lighter right there. But... Um, is this dry yet? It's getting there. I got to be a little more careful until it dries. So I'm going to pull out my, my armrest stick. I, when I first started, I said, I'm not going to use one of these things. And then after a while, I find after I hit my, after I rested my hand on my painting enough times, I said, let me get the damn stick. So that wash is is one of the bet one of my favorite stages because it gets rid of the white of the canvas. And then my next favorite part is this right here. It's putting down these this first deep color uh, because I do a lot of pen and ink work. Laying down those deep blacks is so satisfying. And so with painting, laying down those initial deep shadows, for me, it's, it feels really good. It feels really good. The other thing I like about this painting is the organicness of what I'm doing. So I don't have to be precious with straight lines, like in a cityscape or something. Um, Everything's organic, clothing, trees, magic, uh, face, hands. Not a lot of straight lines that I have to concern myself with in this painting. And when I'm doing landscapes, period, that, that's always a plus. That's always a bonus. It's not having to do straight lines. Don't mind doing straight lines, but... Every now and then, it's it's cool not to have to worry about it, not even concern yourself with doing straight lines. Because straight lines on this would look weird anyway. But this is looking kind of cool. And even though I have the outlines that I'm working. I don't necessarily have to stay inside the lines. I don't have to color inside the lines. I do want to make sure wherever I paint though, that the paint is thick enough and opaque enough to cover up the lines. I don't want pencil lines showing through my painting when I'm done. And I'm not 100% sure I wanted this area here to be deep black or deep violet, deep shadow. That's how I refer to it, deep shadow. But I'm just kind of going with it. I think I'm going to cover it up. But this is going to give me some, some volume. And I also wanted to frame the staff coming down pretty good. So that's why I did that. 
And then I'm going to go through and just pick out from all these cracks and crevices that I, I drew in, where do I anticipate those deep shadows? Ah, uh, that's good. Good stuff. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and frame the face real quick. Now that I've got a good, uh, a good, um, rhythm going. And this I will probably cover up as well. But this is going to give me something to work off of. In those areas. Oh, I really want to go around the eyes with this color, but that would be a little too much right now. So I'll frame out the beard under the cloak. And this is a younger Merlin that I'm trying to get across. So he doesn't have the, you know, the, the three, four foot beard. He's got more of a, a, a mid-aged beard. Is that vanilla? Vitaline? Thanks for stopping by. We're doing a fantasy painting tonight, Merlin the Magician. And right now we're working on our deep shadows, trying to build some volume in the painting. We are using gouache tonight, which I typically use gouache. Um, I used to do oil paintings. I don't anymore. I love oil painting. I just don't do it anymore. I do do watercolor still. Gouache is water-based, but it's more opaque. But I still also do straight-up watercolor painting sometimes. Especially when I'm doing mixed-media work. Um, in fact, I love watercolor with pen and ink and marker. One of my favorite, especially when I'm doing comic work. I love doing that or even concept artwork. I love using the watercolors because I can draw on top of them. They hold ink really well. Uh, so, shout out to watercolorist. Shout out to the different time zones where everybody's at, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. I'd love to know where everybody's from. Um, I do different times throughout the week just to try to catch, because I'm East Coast, so I like to try to do stuff later in the evening so that people, as far as the West Coast, can enjoy. Every now and then we get somebody international jump on, and that's always exciting. That's usually on the weekends. But it's exciting nonetheless. I love seeing the international people. I 
I'm digging it so far. Hope you are too. I, again, I was trying to find ways to, you know, highlight that this is Merlin versus just a wizard. Um, I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to be able to accomplish that. But I have some ideas that I'm hoping translate really well. Um, I think it's, I think there was a time when it would have been very easy to say, oh, wizard, magician, Merlin. But now, since we have the Harry Potters and the Lord of the Rings and the Gandalfs, just looking at something going, oh, that's so-and-so Merlin. I, I don't think that's the case anymore. I think people's natural inclination will be to think middle mid, mid earth is it called middle earth or mid earth and think it's a different character so my challenge is to make you think merlin versus some other magician and how i do that i don't know we'll see at the end of it all People will either go, oh, that looks like Merlin, or that's one of the wizards from something else. In the end, it'll be a cool painting either way. You will be able to tell that it's a wizard, magician, um, or whatever, uh, what's some sorcerer. And that's that's the biggest thing. But it would be extremely cool. If people just looked at it and went Merlin. So I'm gonna have to throw in some some King Arthur stuff in it basically. So as this is drying, I don't know if you can tell it on camera, but you can see that it's not black. It's a nice deep purple. That kind of adds the royalty and regalness to it, um, which is what I was looking for. Whereas the magicians from some of the modern stories, Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, um, those type of things, more earth tones, browns and tans. So for this, I'm using the blues, the grays, uh, not, I'm sorry, not grays, the blues, the violets to show some of that regalness and try to get people thinking beyond uh, the um, mid-earth. Middle Earth. Because I think that's one of the things I can do to kind of show that it's not, or at least make people pause and go, wait a minute, though, that's more of a, 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 a king's wizard versus a, a um, modern story. And I say modern story, which is, which is wrong. <laughs> it's a wrong way to look at it. But I think everybody knows what I mean when I say it. Something that we more associate with now. All right, this one... I'm going to paint all of these with that nice dark. Even though I know some of these I'm going to paint over. I don't want these all to be this dark. But at the same time, like I paint that after it dries. If I go in with a lighter color, it'll still have that dark rim, which I think will be really cool. So that's kind of where I'm I'm going with this. And the the guidelines are just that guidelines. I'm not trying to paint by number here. Um I just needed that feel. So when I shot my reference using myself as a model and my robe, 
Um, I really wanted these, this flow of the cracks and the crevices. I really wanted that to kind of be emphasized, but they're not gonna all stay this dark violet. But some will, some definitely will. I don't know, I'm already having fun with this one. I'm already loving the way it's coming out. I've got my blue magic. As this violet is drying, it's really starting to, to pop with the green and the blue. I'm digging it. I'm digging it a lot. The other thing I like about doing this while the underpainting is still a little wet, is sometimes the water just takes it where it wants to go and just adds that organicness to it. And I go, ooh, and I look at it and I go, ooh, I, I don't, I couldn't have come up with that by myself. And I see it. I like the way this is drying, the blue. Although I think this was a little bit too heavy. So I'm gonna have to go in with a, with a little something there and kind of clean those lines up. But I don't think that'll be a problem overall. And in my mind, I'm starting to think of how much, what my next color is going to be. How much do I want to come up in value? Um, understanding that the main color of the robe is going to be more of a of a red violet versus a, a dark bluer violet. And up here, I'm not going to have those deep like I do underneath. So I want to be careful and judicious about what I do up here because the light's coming down. So I don't think I, I think I just want like a little bit here and there to frame the face. That's all I want to do is frame the face. That line is actually way too thick. I've got a little bit too much water on the brush now. Losing my point. There we go. One of the reasons I like working with gouache versus just straight watercolor is because of its opacity. I don't fret over lines like that. Like I know those two lines are too thick, but I also know I can paint over them because I'm using gouache. If I was using watercolor, I can't color, I can't cover a line that dark with watercolor. It's just not gonna happen. So I would have to work around it. With the gouache, I can cover it up. I can cover it up with white. I just have to wait till it dries and I can cover it up. Gotta love gouache. And I talk about it all the time, but I was using watercolor and one of my art instructors not too long ago, because I went back to school to study concept art for movies and games. Um, and this is based on what I would do for something for like concept art for a movie. But he was like, have you tried gouache? And I'm like, no. And he's like, try gouache. I think you're going to like it. 
And I was like, okay, tried it. And he was right. I love it. I absolutely love it. For multiple reasons. One, I can create pretty beautiful paintings with it. And two, it's way more affordable than oil painting. Um, like I said, I love oil painting, but oil paints are not uh, cost friendly. <laughs> um, I also love the cleanup with gouache. The time it takes to set up, tear down, clean up, can't be beat. I personally think this is looking very good. My paint's holding up pretty good. I'm using a combination of Arteza and M. Graham paints tonight. I remember when I first used Arteza, I was like, oh, I hope this isn't a low budget paint because it's affordable. I don't want to call it cheap because cheap makes it sound quality cheap, but it's more affordable than some of the other brands. And when I started using it, I was like, oh, this is this is nice. All right. And the reason I like them is because of the color uh, selection that they have. I mean, they have crazy colors, even though I can mix just about whatever I want. And I rarely use a color straight out of the tube anyway. It's nice to be able to get close to the color that I want from the beginning instead of mixing, 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 mixing. Um, the whole being I love because they just flow so, so sweetly. Um, the M gram I usually use for my white and black. And then I also use Winsor Newton, which is a, Beautiful, beautiful paint. Um, it dries fast. Uh, and it gives a nice renaissance feeling to it. Some of the colors are not as vibrant as the Artesis but they have great earth tones. Um, and I love them as well. There's only a few paints that I've tried that I'm not super happy with, but I won't even mention them because it may be me. It may not be the paint. It may just be the way I was trying to use it. Because the first time I used Winsor Newton, I was like, I don't like it. But it had nothing to do with the paint. It just had to do with what I was trying to do with it. Um, and then after I figured out how to use it for my technique and style, it was beautiful. Um, because it dries so fast. But it also drives very opaque. And... It gives a really nice, heavy feeling, which is something that you can't always get with watercolors like oil painting because it's a thick paint. You, it, you get that heavy feeling from it, like, oh, this has weight. Um, acrylics, some acrylic, depending on how you use it, you can get that weight, but watercolors, not, not typically. Um, but the, the Windsor Newtons, they have weight to them. Um, I, I really like, uh, how it comes out with them. Now this side, I'm using a lot more of this because the light's coming from this way. 
So on this side, I'm going to have a lot more deep shadows. Um, how are we doing on time? So we're just about at the first hour. get that out of there um if i was doing a pen and ink sketch of this like i might black out this whole entire section and just leave a few areas exposed but with the paint i can I can expand it a little bit and play around with it a little bit more. Come up with some variations and see where it takes me. Sometimes working with colors a little hard. Sometimes it's a lot of fun. For me, limiting my palette right now is the best thing that I can do instead of just saying oh all my paints are available to me and just using a bunch I, I do a limited palette I pick out the colors I want and I put down the colors with the black and white and it helps me have color harmony throughout the painting um, which is a big thing unless I'm going for just the opposite if i'm going for if i'm not going for color harmony if i'm going just for you know vib vibrant vivacious color all over the place then i don't worry about it but a lot of times i want that color harmony and so just picking out a few colors and saying this is what i'm going to use works for me The underpainting is just about dry now. And this is the last part of the deep shadow. And I haven't decided where I'm going next. So I gotta, gotta figure that out here in the next 60 seconds, I guess. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this deep violet and I'm going to mix it with the the rose. Oh no, I'll mix it with, is it rose? Yeah, I'm going to mix it with rose and I'm going to go with not the deep shadows, but the shadows that are on the opposite side of the light and see what that, how it looks, see where that takes me. I did not do a color comp for this one, which I'm, it's such a bad habit. It's such a bad habit not to do the color comps um, because at least then I would know what I want to use, where I'm going with it. Um, but I didn't do it. Luckily, It's a limited palette, so I, I have some restraint. I can't get too far off the rails with just three colors. But I also don't know what's what. As long as I pay attention to my lighting and follow that, then I can't go too far off the rails. If I stop paying attention to the lighting, and I can wind up with some funky stuff that just doesn't look right.
I've been looking at this triangle the whole time and I just I couldn't decide whether or not I wanted it to be part of the deep shadow, but I do. All right. I like it. I think it's already starting to take form and shape. Um, now I'm going to add in some rows, which is actually the, the primary color that I'm working with, going up to a red. So I'm going to mix what I have now with a little bit of the rose and start to bring out the actual color palette. And I don't th think I need that too much anymore. I think it's dry enough for me to just start working now. Do some brush maintenance real quick. I think I, I think I can ditch the stick. This. This is pretty dry now. I think I can rest my hand without worrying about smearing. And I know this is going to, I'm going to start it off on this side over here. Um, it should be a little bit lighter and a little more purple, a little more red rose, I should say. Got it watered down just a little bit too much. The reason I can't, I don't want it watered down too much is because then when I go to blend, it won't be thick enough to blend. Um, and that'll be a problem. Creative Cry, thanks for stopping by. We're doing a little fantasy art painting tonight. Merlin the Magician. And this brush is too wet. I need to take some of this paint off. Or some of the water out, not some of the paint off, some of the water out. There we go. There we go. I'm hoping this dries lighter where it's easily distinguishable between that and what I had down before. Still a little too wet. Let me add in some more. Some more paint to it. And this is pretty dark. I'm going to keep it focused on this side over here. I don't 
don't know if it's gonna dry the way I want it though. It's, it, is, it is, it's drying a little bit lighter. So that's cool. That's cool. I was kind of trying to take it slow to see if I need to come a little bit lighter. I want to make sure that it is easily distinguishable with the deep shadows. And it looked like it's going to be. But I'm going to definitely have to lighten it up some more to do some of the larger areas. But yeah, it's light. It's coming in light enough. It's not thick enough in some areas, but I think I've corrected that by adding some more paint to the mix. That's one of the other harder parts about wash is making sure that it's thick enough so it doesn't look like a watercolor. Um, and the cool thing about putting the wash down, the wash, I can't blend it once it's dry, but I can lift it up. If I put too much water on it, the green will lift up into the color that I'm working. And I don't want that. I have to be careful of that. I think I got most of my creases done. Uh, I can come here. I want to be careful about what I'm doing. I think once I get all the creases done, then I'll be able to go in and start filling in some of the large blocks of color. And that's one of the parts I'm most looking forward to. And I talk about blending, but on this one, I don't think there's going to be a lot of blending. I think I'm going to keep a lot of the color separate. No, I'll be doing some blending on the face for sure. I'll definitely have some soft areas in the face. I usually try to have, I usually not try to have, I usually love to have a podcast or music in the background or a movie, but I can't do it because these videos go up on YouTube and then YouTube tells me I'm copyright infringing and they take my stuff down and that's very disheartening. So I have to use my own entertainment of my mouth. 
and sometimes that just means talking to myself. Because you all can't chat with me. You can put stuff in the chat. But we can't have a conversation. Jay Goss, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. We're doing some fantasy art painting tonight. Coming up with a rendition of Merlin the Magician. Hope you're having a good night tonight. Lots of good content on tonight. So I appreciate you taking a moment to stop by. Now that this is drying, I'm definitely seeing the, the different color separation of the deep shadow violet and then the, the brighter violet. So I'll, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up some of these creases. Now that I see what it's looking like, I wanted to make sure before I went down too far down that rabbit hole. And I'll do a little bit up there. The last deep shadow I didn't do up there, but I will throw a, a little bit up top because it has more of the purple in it than the previous. And really that's the wrong place for it. It should go underneath bottom part of the shadow, not the top. Come on, Brad, keep it together, keep it together. And again, this one, the bottom part of the shadow, not the top. All right, I think that's good. I think that's good. I think I've hit all of the creases. Nope, oh, I got a crease right there. And just doing a quick check. Boom, boom, boom. I can put a little right up under there. Face I'll leave for a while. Those creases up there. Actually, I'll go ahead and do those because those will be my guide post and I can blend them out and they'll still look cool. I'm going to have to use my stick. I thought I was done with it, but let me make sure my big fat head's not in the picture. The other cool part about doing the underpainting is if I miss something, it's not a big deal because it won't show the white of the 
actual canvas, it'll show the underpainting green, which I'm okay with. If I miss something, then it shows a green, you know, that could add to the color harmony. But if it showed white, it would just take away from, from everything completely. Jeff, thanks for stopping by. Colkey, thanks for stopping by. Lots of good content on tonight, so I appreciate you swinging by to say hello. I really should do the top of this as well. Even though I know I'm going to cover that up. And I think that covers all of my creases. Save the face. Oh, no, I got a little one right there. And next up, we're going to add more rows. And we're going to start blocking in some of the big color blocks. Now that we've got most of the creasing done. We've got our blue magic showing through. We've got our creases done. And now I can think we can start putting in some big blocks of color. Just doing a quick scan, making sure everything is good. Looks good. The mat. Which mat? The game mat? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, sure. I can do that. Let me grab one for you. Just a moment here. I have one right here. I think I have two versions. Which one is this? This is the Oh, I do have two versions. I have this one, which has the map of Tavroto, as well as, actually, let me move the painting <laughs> and drop my stick on my foot. So this has the Minotaur. It has the stitched edge, it has the rubber backing, it has the Minotaur, the description, Lords of the Labyrinth is actually a tabletop game that I created, designed myself. I'm actually having version two of the game come out later this year. It's a tabletop role-playing game. Uh, the version one was meant to be played with Dungeons and Dragons. Version two can be played with Dungeons and Dragons or in standalone because I've created a new gaming system for it. But it's based on the island of Tavroto, which is a map that I created. It's an imaginary island, of course. So this one has the map. And then I have another one. That has... No map. This one has no map, has the Minotaur, and this is Lord Aurus. And that's his description. That's not in focus. There we go. He is a dungeon defender and the Lords of the Labyrinth. And as a dungeon defender, his position is to watch the watchers and quickly handle any improprieties. Um, but works for with Magic the Gathering. I use one uh, as my um, dungeon master. Uh, when we play Dungeon Dragons, I'm the DM. So I set up my game mat here for my dice and all that stuff. They are... 
Um, anything else you want to see about it? They all have the stitched rubber and cloth. So they're really nice. Cool. I don't know in the bin, do I have them separated between with map and without map? Oh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I appreciate the postcard set as well. Those the postcards are, are beautiful. I love them. Um, I created those uh, for my Dungeons and Dragons game. And then I created them. I used them for my, my game, Lords of the Labyrinth. I have a thing for Minotaurs and I got tired of the, the traditional same old Minotaur that you see everywhere. And because I love them so much, I just created an entire gaming system around them. So I appreciate that. It gave me time to let some of this dry. <laughs> so thank you. Hope you like them. Uh, thank. Oh, yeah. The red one. Thank you. Thank you. So now we're going to add in a little more of the rose. And we're going to start painting in some of the larger color blocks. And I don't have enough paint. That's too watered down. And it's not going to look good. So let me get some more paint together. You want to see the postcards? I have some of those up, too. I can show you what they look like. I don't know how good the pictures are. Let me grab one of those real quick. Uh, let's see here. So there's this guy. I really dig him. This one, I want to focus on a different horn design. This guy, and I don't, I don't know if you can tell, but he's stabbing some guy in the forest with the blood splatter on the corner. Can you see it? I can't get it to focus. And then, of course, this is actually the one that kicked off the game. He's actually on the game cover. Lord Auris. And each of them have a name and a backstory. And uh, in the game, it talks about who they are, what their specialties are, and all that stuff. So, um, and for years, all I did was create and design different Minotaur. And it was until this year, <laughs> it's funny, one of my friends was like, dude, enough with the Minotaur. Would you paint something else? And I'm like, okay, okay, calm down. <laughs> and then I did, uh, what have I done this year so far? I did... Medusa, I did, or Gorgon, I did uh, a Chimera, which is almost done. Uh, I have a Western-themed painting set. Uh, the first painting is Wired Earp, and now I'm painting Doc Holliday, uh, based on the movie Tombstone. And what's the, oh, of course, I got a Minotaur painting. And the second painting, I can't remember what the other painting was. Hold on a second. It was Pegasus. The Pegasus, which is beautiful. 
the Pegasus, everybody loved it. It's a nice, beautiful painting. Um, so now I'm going to come in and I'm going to start painting in some of the larger blocks of color. Focusing on, again, the light is coming this way. So lighter tones, darker tones this way. This one, uh, let me see. I usually paint coming down this way so my hand doesn't smear. And, but I want to make sure I do it right because the shawl hangs down. So underneath here is where the shadows are. And then on this side, that back side of the arm. So I'm going to start under the arm here. I'm going to add a little bit more paint because that's not thick enough. I don't want it to be watered down. There we go. It's easy to water down the gouache and use it like a watercolor, just like I did on the, the background as a wash. But then when you get into the painting and you want that opacity, you want that thick paint look, you have to control the water. And you can blend wash. It doesn't blend easily. It's not like oil paint. Oil paint loves to be blended. Wash doesn't. And so you, you have to keep it thick enough that... It um when it dries or that it, it, it doesn't just lay flat and you can't blend it anymore. Basically is what I'm saying. And this is a little bit too thin right up in there, so I'm gonna come back and hit it with the big brush. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I want. I have too much paint on my brush. I need to take some of that off. That's not too much paint. Too much water. Too much water. How are we doing on time? We are an hour and a half in. All the line work is done. We're starting on the big blocks of color, which is cool. Let's see how far we can get in the next 30 minutes. Every rose has its thorns. Is that the way it goes? Not sure how far I'm going to go tonight. I'm feeling good. I'm not tired. So that's a good thing. Um, I was mixing really good at first, but now I'm got too much water in my mixture. And I don't want it to be too thin. The cool thing is if if I paint it and I can still see my pencil lines, I know it's too thin. But if it covers up the pencil lines, it's probably the right, right mixture. Although with the gouache, it can definitely be used as an enhanced watercolor and, um, you know, keep that light feeling. But I like a little bit heavier painting because I, I started using oils. That's how I kind of started painting. So I do like that heaviness of the oil painting feel. So I don't want to... I don't want to lose that with the water, but also have to be careful. A 
with that as well. All right, so that's cool. Underneath that arm, up in here, I'm not going to have too much. This is going to be that deep purple. Right under the beard is going to be that deep purple. And I think I'm going to use this as my dividing line. Um, this could be that deeper purple, but it's too close. Actually, this right here could be right in there. Give it a little pop of color right in there. And I want right under the beard. Because as we come out of the shadow, we're going to get more into that color. <laughs> and I think it's going to look really cool. I can even come over there with some of that. It's kind of tricky. Okay, I think this would look good in there, right there. I'm definitely going to do here. I either want this side or this side. I think I'm going to go with this side over here. I'm getting a little bit of dry brush. So I do have to add a little bit of water to get it to flow right. But I have to be careful that it doesn't get watercolory on me. You see how it's getting that dry brush effect? Ah, it's a tricky combination of opacity and smoothness. One of the good things I love about the whole beans, they, they really just flow so nice. I'm using the Artezas right now, again, because of their color selection. And I think I said I'm going to do that. Color lives in the shadow. I don't know if anybody's ever heard that before. But as you get more light on something, the light kind of washes out the color. Ooh, this did not turn out good right there. That was way too thin. There we go. All right. Good, good, good. And as I get toward the end of it, I don't mind that dry brush effect. Because as I go from one color to the next, it's okay. All right, so that takes care of that. I want this piece here, and then I'll start working over here. I think the color harmony is coming out nice. See, that's a nice stroke right there. That's a nice blend. Good water, good paint. Nice stroke. I lost my point a little bit. I 
probably need to clean my brush. I'm losing it. Get the water off of it, get my point back. Every now and then, it's nice to clean it, get your point back. Get some of that excess water off of it. I'm having a hard time with this rose color. All right, let me let that sit for a second. It is drying nicely. So maybe it's just in my mind. Maybe in my head it's not what I might just be me. All right, so that's cool right there. That's cool underneath there. Here, uh, that's cool. I do want a little a little streak and then have it just come out. And dry brush it out. That was a nice stroke. I like that. Just dry brush it out like that. What's happening, Ray? Yes, I am still on. At least I'm. I'm. I'm in a nice flow. Uh, I like the way a lot of this is turning out. I finished all the line work, and I'm starting to put in the main color that that royal purple. So hopefully, it says. Um, doesn't just say, you know, Gandalf, because I'm doing Merlin, the magician, and I don't want people to just see it and go, Wizard Gandalf, because we're not doing Gandalf. How did your raid go? Was it cool? Did you enjoy it? Ray's raid. You could you could patent that. Ray's raid. <laughs> you know, it, it I was talking about that earlier, how most of the time I'm on here talking to myself. But I do that because these, I record these and put them on my YouTube channel. And it would be nice if I had somebody here to chat with while I do it, but I don't. So I talk to myself. I keep myself entertained. Normally when I work, I put on a movie or music. But if I do that, then YouTube gets mad at me. It's like, oh, you're violating copyright and we're blocking all your content now. And I'm like, thank you, YouTube. You suck. Um, even because the, they used to let me play movies in the background, but then I guess they have something that recognizes the the words in the movie. And so they start blocking that. And I'm like, I'm not showing the movie. I'm, sh I'm just having background. Um, whereas music, I can understand it, it, it. The music is the the copyright, but I'm like, if I'm not showing the movie, what difference does it make? So I have to talk to myself, which is okay. What uh, what did you work on tonight? New monster, different monster. Was the train? Did it have a theme?
Oh, nice. That's that's a little bit different for you. Sometimes this was like a jigsaw puzzle. Just like, where do I put this color next? Oh. <laughs> so you made something in wood and then you colored it on pencil. Did you finish it or was it a, uh, a work in progress? One day I am going to start to finish something. No, I take that back. No, I'm not. Oh, okay, cool. I do finish my color comps now. So, but these larger paintings, I would like to do a painting in one sitting, but one is not healthy. Like really every hour I should take a break which is one of the reasons why I, I only do, even when I do paintings like this, uh, if I'm, even if I'm feeling it, I will stop at about the two to three hour mark um, because it's not healthy just to sit here and paint, which I could easily do, especially when I'm, um, man, I'm going through so much pain tonight. When I, um, oh man, I should be mixing this too. I should be adding a little dab of this other violet in there. Keeping it from getting too, oh, I lost my color. Damn it. That's all right. That's all right. I lost it. One of the mistakes I often make, not mixing enough paint to carry me through the section I want to go through, and then I lose the color. But I'm close. Luckily, I'm, I'm more away from the light on this side, so it's going to work out. But my rose color just doesn't want to cooperate with me tonight. It doesn't want to blend the way I want it to. And it might just be me because I've used it a bunch of times before. And I've never had such an issue with it. But tonight it just wants to give me fits. See how dry brushing it is? Ugh. But if I mix any more water with it, I'm going to lose the opacity. I don't know what's up with it. Stay creamy for me. I oftentimes wish magic was real. Part of me believes in magic still. Especially when I see like people like Chris Angel, I'm like, oh my God, this dude has made a deal with the devil and he's, he's, he's throwing out real magic. He does some of the most 
up close, crazy magic I've ever seen in my life. And I'm like, wow. I used to really be deep in the magic. I would go to the magic shop. I did magic for, for kid shows. And I loved it. I loved magic. But when I play Dungeons and Dragons, I, I very rarely ever pick a magician. They're just too hard to play. If you're not deep into the the spells and know what everything is, it can get frustrating. And then people are like, why didn't you do so-and-so? Like, I didn't know I could do so-and-so. As when I first started playing decades ago, when I was a younger kid, I would always pick the magician, the sorcerer, is, I think is what they used to be called. I can't remember whether it was sorcerer or wizard, one of the two. Um, wasn't called a magician. See, I'm thinking that this is too watery, but as it's drying, it is drying the way I want it to. So maybe it's in my mind that I'm, I'm using too much water. Because it may just be the color. Because while it's wet... It looks like I'm going to be able to see the green underneath, but it's drying just the way I want it to. So maybe it's just in my head. I'm thinking that it's not. That's one of the things I like about working on a bigger piece is that I get to see the dry time. When I do the color comps, they're usually finished before they dry. And so I really don't know what they look like until they dry. Because unlike oil paint, wash does not dry the color that it goes down on. It's going to be a little bit darker in some areas, a little bit lighter in some areas. Darker colors dry lighter, lighter colors draw darker. And it usually works out fine. But sometimes it's kind of hard to gauge what what's actually happening. Like this dried a lot lighter than what I'm putting down. Um, wet, and I, I it works out good because now I'm getting that good color separation between the creases. But while I'm putting it down, it looks like man, that's not going to be right. And it might be because well, I have been painting. I haven't been painting on camera, but I have been painting. I have been working on what I have been working on. I've been working on the Chimera, which is almost done. But there's so much I want to do to it. These full paintings, I'm really trying to knock them out the park so that they make good prints and the western print and the pegasus print came out so good i was very happy with them and i just want to i want to create beautiful things don't we all just want to create beautiful things in the world It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. 
All right. Now we're down to the arm. My mind is definitely playing tricks on me. I feel like Bushwick Bill. My mind is playing tricks on me. Maybe it's because I'm drinking alcohol. That could be it too. I am <laughs> My drink of the night is Zoa and rum. So I've got pineapple, coconut, Zoa. And I've been mixing it in the can with coconut rum. And that has been my beverage for the night. <laughs> so maybe, just maybe, part of it is me and my drinking. You should go play with them. How much time do I have? Oh, I'm going on two hours. I'm going to be wrapping it up here pretty soon. I think after I finish this arm with this color, I'm going to wrap it up for the night anyway, because then, like I said, it's not good to go too long without a break. And two hours without a break is definitely too long. I'm feeling a flow. I just love it watching a painting come together. I love watching art come together. Everything I create, you know, when I when I start off with line work and on, with when I'm doing pen and ink, and then I go into the the deep blacks, I'm like, oh, it looks beautiful. When I'm working with graphite, and I start to do the blends and the the, the different pencils i'm like oh that looks so good um every ooh, this is actually part of the robe that comes down so i don't want to do that this is a different color actually this is coming out too light so i'm going to put another stroke on that just watching it come together but then the hardest part is after i get to a spot where i should stop and i don't for me, that that's where it gets tricky and dicey because I'm like, maybe just a little bit more here or a little bit more there. And then I, I, I start overworking a piece and then I get mad at myself because no one else is to blame. This is this is definitely starting to look the way I want it to. Um, this jigsaw puzzle that I created is definitely a lot more involved uh, than what I would typically do, which I don't mind. Um, just not something that I wouldn't definitely create this much problem for myself. But I know in the end, it's going to look fantastic. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm losing the point of my brush again. And I'm losing, it's getting that dry brush again. So I'm going to have to go back to the water. Make sure I put a little more paint in it, keep it creamy. 
Don't want it to be too much one way or the other. There we go. See, that's a nice flow right there. Oh, that looks beautiful. That's perfect right there. Of course, as I get to the end, I get the right blend of paint and water on the palette. Way to go, Brad. Now, do I come here and here or here? I'm going to go ahead and loop it around. I'm also going to try another technique on this toward the end where I use a heavier paint straight out of the tube, no water, and create some thickness. I've done it before um, on my Spider Man and Witcher pieces. And it looks great. I love doing it. But I don't do it all the time because it it's a little, a little more difficult to do. The paint wasn't really made for that. But it adds so much volume to the piece. It looks beautiful when I do it. Because gouache typically just lays flat. So when I can add that volume to it, straight using it straight out the tube it's a very good feeling and i'm just about done here three minutes will put me at two hours straight and i'm almost Done with this color, too. Uh, let's see. Is there anywhere else I want it? That's going to blend into that. Come up into there. Over here. That's a different color. That's a different color. Maybe a little dab right there. Just highlight that crease a little bit. Uh, that's going to be different color. That'll be different. Um, I guess I could. Oh, shoot. Where's my stick? Ugh. I think this would be a nice color right here. Again, framing the face, which is going to be a focal point, just by the mere nature of that it's a face. And faces always are focal points, whether we want them to be or not. I don't want too much it over here. I got some nice under the neck. That'll be a different color. That'll be different. I got that down. This will be a nice big color block. Got some separation there. I can put a, I could put a little stroke right there on the opposite side of that crease. That'll be fine like that. All right. I think that will be it for tonight. Just doing a quick gut check to see if I've got enough. I want a different color there. 
I think I think that's cool. I think that is cool. And we're right at 1035, which puts us exactly two hours. Actually, I'm gonna put a little little trim. I lied. I'm gonna do a real quick trim on this side just to make sure I keep the color harmony for that area. Just on the side of this crease. Give it a nice transition. And I'm using it as a lighter wash. But it's going to help me with transitioning colors. And I want to do the same thing on this side. Or was I just looking at? over here because it is a heavy crease right there that's going to give me some transition rest of it will be fine. That'll be fine. That'll help tie stuff together. That's the side the light's hitting. So maybe I can do a little bit under the beard. You can see how light a wash that is, but it's gonna give me some cohesivity, cohesity in the paint, painting. And now I think that's good. I think that's a good start. Two hours worth of work tonight. I think that I think that's a good start. Um, I may work on it again tomorrow night on a pop-up show. I also still have to finish the Chimera, just so you all can see that. Here's where the Chimera is. Almost done with that one. And I need to have the bushes and trees, you know, overlapping so it looks like he's jumping out. I finished the hair around the mane last time. I need to work on the face, the face, and the face. And then I can do my highlights. And this one will be good. I like this. This is coming out pretty good. I think it's going to make a nice print. And then there's our, our, our Merlin. Start to Merlin. I like the way it's coming out. And I'm going to definitely have to do some more with the magic rays coming down. But I think that's a good start. I might do a pop-up show tomorrow. I'm glad I'm back too, and I'll be looking out for your next show. You take it easy. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. You know I love you, and you all take it easy. Everybody, peace out.